Hello and welcome back. Now it's time for the news updates. I'm Marina Christova. Three Manchester children's homes have, been, have become part of Jimmy Savile's inquiry concerning abuse carried out by the disgraced broadcaster. Sarah Lasky Homes, Broom House, which are both closed and another unnamed children's home, are part of 20 homes where it's claimed Savile abused children. Education Secretary Michael Gove and local authorities have been asked to investigate the claims further. Police are appealing for the public's health to, to trace a man wanted in connection with the rape of a 15-year-old girl. The young girl was raped, was raped on two occasions in Bolton and one of those was a knife point last year. In a following investigation, 31-year-old man Hadi Hidrani was charged with two counts of rape. A warrant has been issued for his arrest after he failed to attend Bolton court, Crown Court to stand for trial. Manchester is seeing a substantial increase in people cycling to work. The number of those com commuting to, by, uh, by bike to work doubled in 10 years, data from the latest 2011 census reviews. Between 2001 and 2011, residents across the country were twice as likely to cycle to work if they lived in urban areas as opposed to a rural one. So, you know, the weather's a lot better, so obviously I feel better about cycling. It's, I can park my bike wherever I want, because you've got public areas. But in the winter, like, the weather puts me off it, so I decide to get public transport, like the buses or the tram, for example, and just walk the rest. Yeah, I use my bike less than I did 10 years ago, so there's a number of reasons for that. But the main one is I think it's really dangerous for cyclists on the roads these days. I don't think car drivers are very considerate, um, and I've had lots of close shades with cars pulling out in front of me that just makes me very cautious about using my bike a lot. Yeah, I use the bike now to go to work and to go home, because the where I work for, I pay for the bike to get you out of your cars, on your bike, get yourself fit and better for the environment and things like that. Apple has announced that a wider range of ethnically diverse emojis would be accessible to text messaging apps. The current list of characters consists of dozens of people that appear to be white. There are only two symbols that seem to be Asian and none of them black. A petition was posted online requesting Apple to increase the ethnic diversity amongst their custom emojis. A national oversight group led by the Home Secretary Theresa May will be looking at how const constables in Greater Manchester respond to domestic violence alerts. She is taking charge of the way police tackle domestic abuse in England and Wales after a report exposed weaknesses last month. Jane Anger, man management group leader, tells the lack of satisfaction is in the root of domestic violence. And in lots of other places. Anger is seen as normal, so it's almost seen as you know, it, it's expected that you get angry at a football match. It's okay to be angry at a football match. It's okay um, to feel those feelings, and they can spill out into actions as well, and it's not okay. A Thailand satellite has detected 300 new objects in the southern Indian Ocean while searching for the missing Malaysian plane. The air search has been suspended due to bad weather, but the ships are still out. Barack Obama has met, uh, has met Pope Francis in Rome for the first time on his European tour. In the wake of the Ukrainian crisis, the President has been meeting with Europe's leaders in a bid to settle the disruption. A court in Turkey has ordered a review of the Twitter ban. The Telecommunication Authority have 30 days to decide whether to remove the restriction. The Turkish Prime Minister said he would wipe out Twitter last week after news of government corruption spread worldwide. Field Marshal Abdul Fattah al-Sisi has announced he has resigned as Egypt's military chief and is standing for presidency. He is believed to have good chances to win. And now it's time for the weather update with you, Helen. With a rainy few days ahead, we hopefully have a nicer weekend to look forward to. The rain has well and truly hit here in Salford, and that is likely to stay for the rest of the day. These could be heavy at times, and the chance of occasional thunderstorms are likely. Highs of 8 degrees, but the cold easterly winds will make it feel more like 3 or 4. 
This evening temperatures will be warmer than they have been on recent nights. The heavy showers will remain throughout, meaning that there is le a little chance of some ground frost. Some of these showers could turn wintry over higher ground. So we are now passing over to Norway, where they have some very mixed weather across the country. The west coast will see the best of the weather, with sunny days and temperatures around 6 degrees. The north will see scattered sunshine, but mainly cloudy. And in the capital Oslo, there is a chance of some heavy snow. So we'll now pass over to Volde University. fish farm is creating conflict in Brandal. Abortion debate rekindled. And the winter weather creates issues for the extreme sport festival X2. Welcome to Volda University College and the Global News Relay. We are sharing the honor of being your host this program with our live team. We sent Charlotte and Nina into the wilds to experience the Norwegian woods in winter. And uh, how are you doing up there? I'm doing great, Espen and Celia. Who wouldn't in this lovely weather? Because <laughs> in Norway, we have an expression that says, there's no such thing as bad weather, only a bad sweater. <laughs> I'm Charlotte. And I'm Lena. And we just made a bonfire with our Norwegian outdoor chef, Ola, <laughs> who is uh, going to make a chocolate cake in an orange for us. And uh, later on, two international students and a teacher from our well-known animation course will join us around our bonfire. Aren't you jealous, Espen and Zilia? <laughs> Can Sam. For those of you who doesn't have intimate local knowledge about Sunmere, do not despair. David has you go cover got you covered. Let's go to a special place in a country far, far away, north of the Atlantic Ocean, where the summer is cold and winter is even colder, where people eat brown cheese and fish bowls, well, not at the same time, but separately, where everyone are good at skiing, the country where the Vikings came from. Oh yes, it's Norway. We're going to a place in Norway called Sunmøre or Sunmore, in the same county as Smøra, next to Ørsta, and west of Stranda. Yes, it's in Volda. Between hills and mountains lies a place known for its characteristic nature. A good place to study, and of course, a lot of rain. Now you're thinking, does somebody live there? The answer is yes. It's actually 8,000 inhabitants in Volda. And why do they live there? Well, actually, Volda and the rest of Sunmoor is quite known for its export industry, like fish export. So if you're eating fish right now, that fish might have been swimming around in these fjords. Amazing. And you've probably seen a bow like this. Well, that's an expo invented by Ulstein Group, which also is in Sunmore, or Sunmøre, as we say in Norway. Great snow! In Brandal, a new conflict has risen with plans to build a new fish farm. Exporting fish is one of Norway's largest sources of income. 
Fish farming is a type of aquaculture where fish farmers raise fish for food in a supervised environment. The Norwegian fish farming industry started in the 70s. Show it to her from Trasnarga's side. Trasnarga is a big success. Det är en av de näringarna i Norge som har haft störst växt. The local population in Brandal, a small village on the west coast in Hareid County, are now in a dispute with Salmar Organic. Salmar wishes to build a fish farm close to Brandals coastline. Salmar kan jag säga att det är så och så långt i förland, så ligger förtöjningen nästan helt upp i fjärrstenen och det gänger inte an att ha organ eller in i hela de områden som är spärra. Född och uppvuxen i bygd och vet vad detta område betyder för trivsel och hälsa till folk som bor där. Fiskar som klagar över fisk som blir ödelagt. De kanske sätter redskap i sjön. Laxevastrag blir stängt på grund av laxelus. Det är en av huvudutfordringarna för uppdragsnäringen och hela lusenivåer ner. Slik at lakselus ikke skader vildfestbestand. Og det er en kontinuerlig prosess og et arbeid. The former mayor in Hareid County does not think that a fish farm in Brandal will create enough jobs to weigh up for the downsides. Gi ikke disse anlegger arbeidsplass der anlegger ligger. Der det gir arbeidsplass, det er der som det er slakteri. Ellers er det automatisk mating og alt så... Så det är inte arbetsplatser av betydning i det hela tatt. Följligen så skapar det aktivitet. Så vi sa att vi har tusen ansatte i, i, i Salmaen spredd på hela kysten här. Det är det är kysten här det är. The inhabitants explain that they are not against the fish farming industry. The problem is localization. Nej, huvudargumentet är att det ligger mitt i en bygd. Och det kommer helt in på oss i områden som vi brukar till att fiske, till fritidsfiske och till rekreation. Och då kan man inte lägga slika anlägg upp i, i nära områden på den. Whether or not Salmar gets their construction permit is not yet clear. Ever since the Viking Age, Norway has been a seafaring nation. Today, Ulsteinvik is a center of offshore industry and ship innovation in our country. In 2005. Ulstein Design and Solutions launched a new type of ship bow, which revolutionized the offshore industry. Today, the X bow is a unique trademark sold to many international companies. Well, it's an inverted bow shape, which um, has an increased height as compared to the normal type of ship bow to have. It's a what I call a gentle displacer. It's, it has a giving, a forgiving bow shape in which that you don't have to have, or you don't have the um, uh, pounding that you normally have from a normal top bow, you have a more gentle um, transit through the waves. Behind me now you see Ulstein Werft, one of the pioneers of marine and offshore technology, Norway's biggest industry. When we first launched it, people were very skeptical. Mm. The scientists we're not too happy with the concept. I mean, we were told that, all right, it's a good thing that people think differently and think new thoughts, but we're absolutely sure that this boat will go down as soon as it hits away, but it didn't. And just being able to counter that is a good thing. It, must, it gives you a really good um, boost of self-esteem. Since 1960, the Norwegian offshore business has invested about 400 billion euros. Komsvog believes that innovation like the Expow is one of the key elements that keep the business going. We have started something different in the market. We have started a, another focus. But I mean, I'm, I'm that type of person that I, I do not dwell too much on what has been. I mean, never rest on your laurel. The idea behind the expo, as well as depleted boats, are sold to companies all over the world. Norway is a country with weary terrain, making transportation difficult. Because of that, Norwegians are dependent on the ferry system. If we don't have ferry, then the society has died. Ferries in Norway transported over 19 million vehicles and passengers in 2013. Over 30% of all ferry traffic in Norway is located in Møre and Romsdal. The ferries are important for keeping the region alive.
Det er noe en uh, viktig jobb, ja, for uh, vi, <laughs> vi har noe blant annet beredskap og frakter både syk og politi og brannbiler og i nøts i nøts tilfelle og, og ellers uh, vanlige reisende, så det er egentlig en veldig viktig jobb. Many people depend on the ferries to see their family, get to work and go to school. Det er fordi at jeg bor i Ålesund, og så bor foreldrene mine på Folkstad, så da er jeg avhengig av ferga hvis ikke jeg skal kjøre rundt, og det er jo ikke så veldig hyggelig. Nei, altså, her er jo mange som dagpendler da, til metropolen Volda, da, for, for arbeid og, og skole og sånn sett der. Da. Jeg tror ikke jeg vil dø ut med det første. Nei, så, politikere de driver jo og diskuterer om ferjefri E39 og sånn, men det er ikke noe jeg tror på. Det, det går for langsomt. Det er mye opp og fram før ferja dør ut. Ferien vil ikke dø ut, nei, for det, det er for mye fjorder til. Og for lite vilje til å bygge broer og tunneler. And according to Lonely Planet, Norway is the most beautiful country on Earth. Well, isn't that something? And have you seen the Disney film Frozen? Well, the surrounding in this movie is inspired by the nature of Sundmøre. But Norway wouldn't be so special if it wasn't for the Norwegians. Because they are quite interesting as well. Now let me describe a typical Norwegian in only one sentence. A hiking enthusiast this smells like milk and plays the harding fiddle. And of course, he is fishing as well, just like me. Whoa, now I've got some fish. <laughs> and it's a big one. <laughs> oh, come on, fish. And I need some milk to get it up. <laughs> Great milk. Norway is celebrating the 200-year anniversary of its constitution this year. But... What actually happened 200 years ago? Typical Norwegian 19th century house. It is situated in a small 19th century village created by Volda Museum to show how life was 200 years ago. 1814 is an important year for Norway. In Norway, 1814 is remembered not because of the great war fought in Europe, ending Napoleon's reign, but because this war resulted in a great upheaval in Nordic politics, leading to Denmark ceding Norway to Sweden. When the news of this reached Norway, it sparked a rebellion, led by the Danish crown prince and governor of Norway, Christian Fredrik. He sent out a summons to the whole of Norway to send two people from each parish to Eidsvoll and the Norwegian Constituent Assembly. When the representatives met at Eidsvoll, they were given the task of making a constitution for Norway. This constitution was signed and Christian Fredrik elected King of Norway on the 17th of May 1814, declaring Norway's independence. After only a couple of months though, Norway was forced to enter a personal union with Sweden, which lasted until 1905. Harald Krøvel, you're an expert on 1814. What happened leading up to that year? Well, among uh, Norwegian historians, there are a great uh, discussion whether uh, 1814 was a product of development within Norway or whether it was uh, a consequence of uh, short-term development uh, in Europe uh, in connection to the uh, war in uh, Europe uh, between 1800 and 1815. So uh, that's um, a discussion that has no uh, obvious answer, but uh, it seems likely that uh, without the uh, war in Europe, there would be no constitution for Norway in 1814. Uh, and um, how did how did the war affect this? Uh, why was it possible for Norway to break free due to the war? Well. The two opposites in this war was, of course, uh, Napoleon and uh, Britain. And um, before 1814, Norway was part of a union with Denmark, and Denmark supported Napoleon. Uh, on the other side, uh, you have Sweden, uh, which uh, went together with uh, Britain and Russia, opposing Napoleon. So when Napoleon finally uh, was defeated, uh, Sweden 
had an agreement with uh, Britain and uh, Russia that uh, Norway would be transferred from Denmark to Sweden. And that was uh, exactly what happened in, in 1814. So, uh, so there was nothing I in Norway uh, directly before 1814 then? Um. Not exactly, but you can see in long term uh, uh, developments uh, when it comes to uh, an increasing uh, uh, patriotic and, uh, natu uh, and uh, a, a sense of nation national identity developing in the 18th century. And uh, this is, of course, uh, a very crucial background for the, what happened in 1840. But uh, uh, most likely there would be no um, uh, political changes if, uh, if there haven't been this war and uh, the direct consequences of the war uh, for the union between uh, Denmark and Norway. Yeah. It's a custom for Norwegian primary school to carry their own banner in the parades, which takes place every year on the day of the Constitution, 17th of May. Mork Primary School in Volda has, ha, has taken the opportunity to renew their banner this year. Hip, hip, this year's national holiday will be special for Mork Primary School. And so here we have this fan of ours here, so it's going to be slated. Och då tänkte jag, hmm, kanske vi ska fira 200-årsjubileet med att lägga nya fan också. The new banners content will be decided by a drawing contest. Så nu ska 15 till 20 klasser, där ska faktiskt lägga fan då. Och vi ska knyta ihop fler teckningar så att det är fler som får vara med på det. Och så eh, ska vi lägga fan ut från det. Det är liksom tagna to som går liksom är er på sitt målfärg så ett norska flagg. Use feels it is important that the children know what is being celebrated. Demokrati är er våra. Eh uh, där är er många viktiga ting att ta med här då. Ehm uh, ungarna syns det checkta för 17 maj men det er kanske inte alla så vet lika gott varför med färger. So what do the children want to see on their new school banner? Vad är sitt målflagg? Och kanske någon så går i ett tåg eller ett eller annat. Något fint som passar till sitt anmål. De har i hvert fall bara en morgskul på. The International Women's Day, the 8th of March, gathered a large crowd in the streets. The ongoing debate about doctors' rights to reserve themselves from discussing abortion has caused major outcry in Norway. Our reporter was in Nordfjordeid, a small town where there hasn't been a Women's Day parade since 1977. It is Siri Sandvik from Arbeiderpartiet. Siri Sandvik, du är er en av initiativtagarna till den här markeringen. Ja. Vad grund att tucker markera det akkurat i år? Ja, det som alltså jag personligen har alltid varit upptatt av likställning och kvinnorättigheter. Det är er på mot uppsåt till att vara. Men det som har väckt mig nu i år, det är er helt klart den saken som har er kommit upp om reservationsrätt för fastläkare. Vad syns du om uppmötet här idag då? Jag är Det var väldigt spännande då för att eh, nu är er det ju eh, väldigt väldigt många år sedan det har varit 8 mars markering på Eid och så var jag väldigt spänd på hur det skulle bli om det var väl något engagemang eh, men detta här är er i överkant av det jag hade trött så jag är er väldigt nöjd. Jorun Sandvik, du gick ju också i det tåget här i 1976. Uh, jeg fann ut i heimen når jeg så uh, i skriftene mine at jeg tror faktisk det var i 1977. Du tror det var i 1977? Jeg hadde ikke en tanke om at det var i kvinneåret, men så fann jeg vel ut egentlig at det var i 1977. Men det er jo ganske mange år siden det er likevel. Det er veldig mange år siden. Og hvilke saker var dere kjempet om uh, på den tiden? Det var veldig mye de samme sakene. Da kjempet vi jo for, vi tror vi må gå bort her så toget går da. 
då kämpar vi för självvaldabort. För det var ju ändå inte kom på den tiden. Det kom ju 1978. Och vi ville gärna ha utvidga föräldrapermission i förbindelse med födsel. Kvinnofronten krävde sex månader av födselspermission och vi tyckte det var i överkant. Det var voldsamt. Vi vill gärna ha barnhageplats till alla barn. Barnhageplats är en förutsättning för att kvinnor ska kunna vara i arbete och vara trygga för ungarna sina. Det var viktiga saker på 70-talet, helt klart. Vad är grunden att du är här och går i tåg idag? Nej, det är det här som är grunden. Jag tänker att det är en jätteviktig kamp som blev vunnit för länge sedan och som nu står i fara. Kvinnor kan bestämma sig över sin egen kropp. Ja, vad tänker du om det att vi måste ta upp den här kampen igen nästan 40 år efter att efter att det blev gjort sist? Nej, jag syns det er tragisk. Men jag syns också det visar att att upparbeta de rättigheter det är något man alltså man måste försöka kämpa och det är inte bara denna saken, det gäller alla andra kvinnorätter och att det är inte någon självfölje. De tingen vi har fått till är inte någon självfölje och att unga kvinnor är jätteviktigt att unga kvinnor engagerar sig särskilt är ju gammal och var aktiv för länge sedan. Så det jag syns är trist att det måste till men det måste till. Och jag tror att det kommer komma att fortsätta mot det till. Ja. Och då ser det nästan ut till att tåget börjar avslutas här i Norrfjordet. Så det ser ut att kvinne kvinnodagstraditionen lever vidare och så jämför det bara och gratulerar med dagen till alla sammen här ifrån Norrfjordet. There are as many unemployed people in Spain as there are residents in Norway. This causes many young Spanish students to flee their country. Lawyer, psychologist or even a doctor. They find a job maybe in McDonald's or in a supermarket or something like that. And they are struggling quite a lot. Paloma Isaac came to Norway in 2011. She says the people of Spain are unable to get jobs within their field of education. When I finished my degree in Spain, I started to to, to look for a job, search for a job, and it was really difficult for us. Almost all my classmates are without a job now in Spain or working in another field that is not psychology. Dunya is in the same situation as Paloma. She wants to go back to Spain in the future, but is afraid she won't get a job. I know that it's hard. And I, I don't know, I feel a little bit scared about coming back there and trying to get a job. The youth unemployment rate in Spain is over 50%, which has caused many to cross borders in search of new job opportunities. The financial crisis of 2008 is the main reason behind these social problems. I think because of the corruption as well. Corruption might affect, you know, everyone is trying to, to take money for themselves and they don't think about others. This crisis is a kind of a big challenge for us. It's a way for reinvent our identity. And for the people of Spain, the future is still uncertain. Uh, my future is in Norway now, and I think it will be for uh, quite long, because uh, the, the possibility of coming back to Spain is almost zero for me now. I know that it's almost impossible to find a job as a psychologist there. I try to not see it, because, you know, thinking about the future is it's a little bit scary. So if I think too much about the future, it scares me. Um, makes me anxious. For the first time since the financial crisis, the unemployment rate is going down. And the future may look brighter for Spain. Uh, Duna from Spain and Rado from Australia have just joined us on our table. And uh, we have given them traditional Norwegian bonfire bread. How do you <laughs> How did you like the bread? Have you tasted it? I haven't tasted it. No. Should, should, should we go should for I? it? Okay. Go ahead. Should we go like that? Do you want to go first? You can just pull okay. it off. No, we go together. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like mm. it? <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's actually good. Better than I thought. I thought it was uh, harder. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm. But I'm curious though. How did you picture Norway before you came here? You start. Um. <laughs> I know, of course, like the stereotypical way, like what would happen if you Googled Norway images, mountains, snow type thing. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't really experienced the culture or anything, so I just had more of like a, a visual idea of how it was. Mm. But um, 
What about you, Daniel? <clears throat> Well, um, I knew that it was cold and, you know, <laughs> in Spain it's really warm and sunny. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to experience something different from Spain, so yeah. Yeah. just wanted to take the adventure. Yeah. yeah, you've been here for four years now. Yeah. And do you remember the first thing you told your friends and family when you first came here? Uh, well, I told them that it does, that was beautiful, the mountains and the surroundings, yeah, and they they were also impressed because I show from ah, Skype, you know, yeah. pictures and, yeah. <laughs> so, what about you, Rado? Um, friends and family. I told them that it was a lot more quiet, quiet? than back home, yeah. yeah, which it is, I mean, <laughs> here, but in the cities, perhaps it's different, but, um, no, that people are a lot more friendly, a little bit more friendly than, than back home. Mm. Um, and of course, yeah, I showed them pictures and they said it was great, which it is, it looks really nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was it. Apart from more friendly people here, yeah. can you tell the biggest difference between Australia and Norway? The biggest difference? Uh, <laughs> the shops, obviously. Like, um, I don't know, the way that the city is kind of built, we have obviously like the big roads and things like that. And, um, here it's more like a village, but Apart from that, there's not a there's not a massive difference. I, I don't think, hmm. in terms of people anyway. I think it's pretty much the same almost. Okay. Yeah. And you've been there almost for almost a year now. Yeah. So to see <laughs> <laughs> how much Norwegian you have learned so far, <laughs> we're going to have a pop quiz for you to test mm. you. So Charlotte is gonna ask you some questions, and whoever first one to answer gets one point. <laughs> he has advantage. Uh, uh, it doesn't, doesn't count. <laughs> okay, okay, are you ready? ready? Yeah, go for are it. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. <laughs> what are the sweaters that we are wearing cold? The name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marius Genser. Ah, yay! Oh, yes. That's very good. <laughs> Correct. What, what, did, what were you going to answer? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Norwegian sweaters. What did you sweaters. say? Blue, blue sweaters. Blue sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and what are the name of this? Branches. Bruno. Yay! Yeah. So yeah. the score is 1-1. One, one. They're yeah. very good. We're even, yes. we're even. Would you like a taste? Uh, yeah. yeah. I Just think I would. How do I use this? You haven't used it? <laughs> I've never used it. Wow. No, of course not. That's also Norwegian. Yeah, you just, I'm just going to take a very thin slice. Push a bit like more downwards. Okay, can I just taste that one? Yeah, yeah. of course. Like, Go ahead. <laughs> okay, first time. Okay, a bit but I think we have a tie here. Yeah. And um, so we have one and a half chocolates. I think since you tasted the cheese, you get this chocolate and you get <laughs> <laughs> this chocolate. Thank you. Okay, but can we hear a scream of joy from both of you since you both won? A scream of what? Joy, because joy. Yeah. <coughs> One, two, three. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <coughs> a possible reform in the cinema trade organization threatens to weaken the position of smaller cinemas throughout Norway. The cinema manager in Östra is worried about the consequences of the pending reform. Det vi fruktar mest det är att vi får mindre tillgång på film. Och det är klart att vi ställer begränsa distributionen av film till oss så vill vi få tillbaka igång. The reform will weaken the position of small cinemas all over Norway. Och det vill säga att vi ska få inflytelse av besök så är det kvar enkelt det kino har. Och då vill vi få mindre inflytelse på det som vi har idag, där kvar enkelt har kvar sig i stämma. Konsekvenserna kan säkert bli att vi får mindre film efter kort och att minst de lägga går upp. The people of Volda appreciate having a cinema nearby. Vi har och 3000 studenter nästan på högskolan. Det är ett gott kulturtillbud för dig bland annat och og också för ungarna som är byggda. Det är ju alla som lika bara spela fotboll och sånt här så det är rätt att ha lite andra ting också där. Ja, jag har varit väldigt lei men visst när vart lagt ner och det checkt då det er socialt och far med vänner och syskon och ja, kärste. The possible reform will only benefit some cinemas. Det vill vara de stora kinoarna, bykinoarna som vill tjäna på det. Det är att de har större besök.
Men det vi har yttersta konsekvenser kan det bli att det där minsta kina man lägger ner att det blir sig rätt och slett. The annual meeting of the trade trade organization will decide on the reform in June this year. We are currently making a web series called The Ten Commandments to see whether or not the ancient rules still apply today. Det med Gud var knytt till det som var sant och det var knytt till det att be och det var knytt till respekt. Eh och också tänken att det är en Guds namn var en slags värn mot det vonde då och vonde fina fienda. Ehm så att eh, Gud och Guds namn var något helakt något annorlunda så det var inte något ändå tulla med, inte sant? Det är saker som plejer sig oss b**** Egentligen, det mesta man har hört för att sno att när vi spilt att det är vi simmar b**** Det är kanske något av det styggaste jag såg i nockarna, eller han säger det i nockarna texterna mina Even though they're not anti-religious, the heavy metal band Darkest Sins doesn't shy away from using religious symbology Like in the song Brand New Attitude, with lyrics like Behold, I'm your god Det handlar som något är varken kristlig eller ukristlig För när man spelar i band så får man ofta den Hållning av våra folk då, du vet ju också alla, det är ju inte loven hela tiden. Man måste ju tro att vi är noe. Um, och detta, den var på en måte mitt slag tillbaka då. Och så ville man gärna göra allt lite extremt. Så det vill ta den hållningen att så stort som det kan höras ut. Och då syns det den sättningen var väldigt bra. Vi håller dem i guard för då har du verkligen, då har du mycket självklart hvis du ser på dig själv som en gud. Heavy metal har ofta blivit jagat av religion. Och det är ju kanske på grund av texter och image och... Mange ser jo kanskje litt skumle ut, men uh, de fleste heavy metal folk sier jeg møtte, de er jo egentlig snille, snille som damm, egentlig. Rock og metal-sjangeren er jo, uh, den har jo sitt opphav i uh, det opprør. Og uh, det er jo, kristne verdier, det står jo ofte for litt sånn uh, stramme regler. Og hvis du skal gjøre litt opprør, så gjør jo det mot det uh, strammeste rammen du finner. Det är ju kanske det störste man kan kritisera det är ju kristendomen. Det träffar ju väldigt många i alla fall i den delen av världen. Sån så från gammalt av så är ju det att uh, man ska inte snacka stykt om uh, sin herre och alltså men det börjar ju bli lite utvaska på något sätt. Han kan det se lika farligt nu. Jag tror mer att det jag tror är för kristendom ting i Guds namn. Man kan man kan döma Nice music, but it's not part of music. <laughs> yeah, how how would you classify your genre of music? It's the uh, guitar instrumental music in Nynorsk.
<laughs> yeah. What will you play for us today? Uh, a song or a tune called uh, Ro in Norwegian, but in English it's Silence. Silence. Well, what is the, that song about? Uh, silence. <laughs> Music about silence. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's. I think it's most. Uh, it's my most um, easy song on my uh, records. Okay, yeah. mm. easy as in to people to listen for people to listen to. Or? Yeah, maybe people can sleep to it. <laughs> okay, it's so beautiful. Let's hear it then. Yeah. accompanied by Dave King, one of the co-founders of the animation firm Rainox Studios and also a teacher at Tate School in Ivalda. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Dave King, you are originally from London. That's right, I am. How did you end up in Volda? Uh, I was kidnapped <laughs> and dropped off in well, a box. Why King? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I was doing a tour of Norway with Cartoon Network and uh, Andres and Gunnar at the animation department heard about me doing this and so they asked me to come over and do a, a two-day seminar uh, and that went really well and then they asked me to come over and do two weeks the following year and I did that for the next few years and then they said oh the two weeks are going really well you should come over for a month every year and then the month they kind of turned around and said oh why don't you just come over and it was like uh, the, but gradually they kind of pulled me in yeah. really. So I was kidnapped. It was just I was kidnapped <laughs> over seven years, basically. Okay, so you were kidnapped, kidnapped bit by bit. Yeah, in yeah. bits. Yeah. yeah, parts of me. <laughs> one bit of me every year was kidnapped, basically. Okay, but now you're here in yep, a hole. Yeah, that's true. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Enjoying this wonderful Volda weather. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> but uh, apart from teaching. What was your uh, motivation for uh, moving to Norway and, and Volda? Um, I, I'd been working for many years as a freelance uh, animation director and script writer. And uh, I'd been doing that for a long time. And I, honestly, I was kind of looking for... I, I get restless very easily. And I was looking for a new challenge. Mm -hmm. And when, when the dean of the animation department sort of said, we want you to come over and head up a, a new part of the animation course, Moving to Volda seemed like about as big as a challenge as, as I could possibly find, really. Moving from London to here yeah. was a huge leap. But the, the animation course in Volda, it's, it's quite well known internationally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a great reputation internationally. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the oldest animation course in Norway. And there's huge connections all over the world. Uh, yeah. both, both Gunnar and Andres um, have a lot of connections everywhere. Andres, like myself, comes from the industry. Uh, so we both bring a lot of the outside animation industry into Volda as well. So that, that's another important thing about the, the, the animation courses. Sorry, there's a lot of smoke coming here from the lo <laughs> lovely bonfire over there. <coughs> um, we have, uh, we're, we're very connected with the animation industry. So the students don't just come here for three years and operate and work in a little bubble, isolated from the rest of the yeah. world. Uh, we have a lot of guest teachers, as I started off doing. And so we have a lot of connections with the industry and that, that means we have a very high success rate for students when they go out into the industry. They get jobs quite, quite e not easily, but they, they, we have a good strike rate with students. Cool. Yeah. And in 2010, you started something called Creative Volda. Yeah, I did. What, what exactly is that project? Um, it, was, it was basically, it was an idea to, to have a creative, a monthly creative forum here in Volda. Um, there's a huge creative industry. In both in Volda and in the surrounding area um, and I kind of wanted to find a way of bringing people together to exchange ideas and find out what people were up to so with uh, Ermelin Nordal at uh, the Vesnorsch Film Centre in Bergen uh, and with the help of people like Gunnar Andenes uh, we, we set up this monthly forum here in Volda 
and uh, eventually became very successful and and it, it then came it became creative Surdus and murder which for those of you watching sir and murder is the <laughs> county that we're in um and now it's spread out all over it's now called creative filka and so we have uh monthly creative meetings in in Ollison, uh molder volder and somewhere else i can't remember sorry nice. but this yeah it's it's cool uh, there's a lot of there's an exchange of ideas every month and we get to see what people are working on yeah. and it's not just animation it's all the creative industries cool. so that's really cool oh Ooh. i think i smell some chocolate here wow yes. okay <laughs> This is orange and this is a destroyed orange. <laughs> <laughs> it's cake inside and it's delicious. So, ah, so yeah. is it done I think yet? it's finished. It yeah. is. No. But first, I think we're going to watch a movie <laughs> um, made by Renox Studios. It's about uh, how it's like being a student here in Molda. Ola has just finished making his cake, and uh, Lina and I, we are about to taste it. Okay, um, yes. how do I do this? Uh, so, this is uh, orange, Yeah. and there should be cake inside. Okay. And I think it's very simple. <laughs> you just take a spoon and try. Okay. Mm. Oh, it looks weird, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm excited. I guess it is. I'm very excited, okay. <laughs> it's very good. You hmm. have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> have you tasted it? Uh, no. You, you haven't? Should. Okay, are you sure? Yeah. But, uh, but Ula, yeah. you have quite a lot of experience making food outside. Yeah. Can you tell about it? Yes, of course. Yeah. I think uh, making food mm. outside is just like making food inside. Mm. So, uh, basically you can make anything and when, when people go outside and they make food, they mostly think about making very simple things. But you can make anything, uh, like salmon and you dig it into the earth and it becomes <laughs> creamy and good. Whoa! And you can, uh, yeah, you can slaughter a reindeer and uh, boil <laughs> it. And, yeah, yeah, you can do anything. But how did you make this cake? Uh, this cake, uh, that's just the normal dough of chocolate cake mm -hmm. and you take an orange and you chop off the top mm -hmm. like this and you put the dough inside mm -hmm. and you put it in the fire where it's not too hot mm -hmm. um, 
and after a while it's done. <laughs> yeah. For how long? Um, maybe half an hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, Lynn and I, we have just been serving our guests with peanut bread today. Yes. If you want to serve them something, uh, something better. Yeah. Yeah, here they are. Hello. Yeah. yeah this is what we on this typical Norwegian afternoon. You have to taste mine. Taste mine. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, if we wanted to have given them okay. something more exotic than than uh, pin bread. Yeah. What should we have made? Uh, I don't know. You can try it here. Yeah. Oh. I have now made a cake really as well. Nice. So, so that's the rest of the cake. Yeah. That's the rest of the wow. chocolate cake. Just added some of the. Orange. Orange. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one idea. Okay. Like this. Mm -hmm. Or you can make, uh, for example, last year I made mousse and you, I dug a hole in the ground and put stones in the hole, then mm. light the fire in the hole and throw stones on the top and then wait till the fire is gone. And then all the stones are warm. You put the mousse <laughs> inside where, when you out the stones and then you put the stones on the top of the mousse yeah. and then you put grass and toil yeah. and anything and leave it there for two hours and then you have mousse from the ground and it's delicious, wow. for example. It that sounds, sounds great. Sounds cool. But in 2003 an even greater chef than you Ola opened a bakery in a small village Memlu. His name was Martin Chakanda and uh, now his bakery gets visitors from all over the world. In the middle of Norway, there is a bakery everyone that visits Lam has to stop by. In 2004, former member of the Norwegian cooking team, Morten Chakenda, opened Lam Bakery, which showed again that good food is synonymous with Lam. This is my bakery in Lam, that we are going to have a new bakery. All of us will have a new bakery when we come here. But we are here very good bread. Och så har vi väldigt goda sån mörke danskrubre och ett fruktnötterbröd. Shakenda thinks that one person has a lot of the credit to why there is so many great places to get quality food in Lam and that the locals appreciate good food. Och så med han bryr med och den tid han hade på för som hotell och och där folk folken han fick jobba upp. Jag tror det folk har en lite annan inställning men på en måte en land att det är goda platser att äta här och eh, för samma till är känt för maten sin anmorgar är känt för maten sin In 2003 Shakenda discovered a place that was perfect for a bakery and a year later it was open for business ja, Det är lite sånt tillfälligt då vi, vi har gett ut en bok som heter om bollar och bröd och tillfälligheter och det är nog lite tillfälligt Eh, men huvudgrunden till att jag eh, vurdert eh, lång det var nog eh, säkert Anna Brimi. Today the bakery has workers from all over Europe and uses this to their advantage. Och så måste vi se hur vi checkar eh, spanjola, eh, folk från Grekland, Kanada kommer i år, England, lite över Latvia. Så vi har liksom eh, nästan nu att kan kanske köra min dörr. So, so can we, yeah, can we serve it? I'm there is I I use it spro. Shakenda is sure that running a bakery in Lam is much harder than doing it in a larger city. Yeah, I'm in Tilga Chef Open Bakery, so me, so me, my mentor, he say, so so he say, he's not to drive a bakery, so it's there in in Oslo. They can train up a chimpanzee team, and so there are folk over all. So we must have. Nästan alla ser på besök i dem och vi har in dem här då. We Norwegians love being outside. We even have a live team outside right now. But some take it further than others. For Heyerdahl, Roald Amundsen, Fritjof Nansen and Lars Monsen. They're all Norwegian explorers, actually. Have you heard of them? Of course you have. Thor Heyerdahl traveled from Peru to French Polynesia on a balsa fleet. <laughs> Roald Amundsen, he is the first person to reach the South Pole. Fritjof Nansen, the first person to reach the North Pole. And Lars Monsen, well, Lars Monsen 
he's like the Norwegian Bear Grylls. And of course, we have our own explorers at Sundmøre as well, like Ragnar Torset. And according to Prince Philip, this guy is nuts. <laughs> Let's take a look. Ah, great milk. Jeg tror at tro på egne grenser røver oss vår sande muligheters land. In the small community of Hare on the west coast of Norway lives Ragnar Torset. The 66-year-old is one of Norway's most known adventurers. Already as a young boy he got a thirst to explore the world and create his own adventures inspired by the stories of other Norwegians that travel around the world. Det började nog i barndomen med mor med som för mig och min ett år yngre bror kvar enaste kväll las från ymse författare och då jag var 20 år då fick jag snurre av onkel min så då började jag på den och allerede då fick jag lust till själv att komma ut och uppleva ting. He has sailed over the Atlantic Ocean and participated in a scooter expedition to the North Pole. During his life, Torset is probably best known for rowing the distance between Norway and the Shetland Islands in 1969. <laughs> Så det var ju tusenvis av människor på kaja och tog emot oss. Och när jag rodde fram i landningen så kom folk ut i sjön, tog fatt i båten och bar med och båten många hundra meter upp på land och upp på kaja. Och dagen efterpå fick jag möte och ha samtal med dronning Elisabeth och prins Philip. For a whole year he and his family lived on a boat on the island of Svalbard. He especially recalls frequent visits from a polar bear. Och en moment i det att vi stekte bacon för att spre gode dufter från båten för att få björn till att komma närmast möjligt. Och när han kom på räcka så fick han mat. Vi låg en gång tre dagar med samma björn, en svär handbjörn. Han fick spekkött så vi hade fått på utförsel av allt för salt så vi likte inte det själv och särskilt men björn likte det. Today Torset is spending most of his time on his boat planning new adventures. Det är otroligt vad man inte kan när man av ärlig vilja inte prövar. Every day Torset is exercising on his rowing, rowing machine. He is looking forward to new experiences this summer. The winter weather here in the western parts of Norway has been the longest and driest in many years. That has brought unexpected conditions for the extreme sport athletes in the area. Down a lair and kör ned, brått och bak av sving och kör fort. Hur fort är det? Var det helt? Hur raskt ska du vara uppe? Jag har 80. Är det raskt att jag vara uppe? This winter's warm weather and lack of snow has made the conditions perfect for the longboarders in Volda. Jag syns den var helt fantastisk. Jag känner att jag nästan stått mer i vinter än jag har gjort på det sommar. Så för mig så är det varit helt upp. The longboard competition export is held during the Extreme Sports Festival X2. The local longboarders are not worried about what will happen if the snow comes before the festival. The mange som inte kommer hit för idag är rätt och slett rädda för dålig vär, snö och så. Vi hade ju snö på Expo för två år sedan och kört i snö. Och det är så vär som snö, det var några kämpstads. Det är många som blir skattiska. Så jag är helt full av snö för det kommer inte vara fler i år. Grunden av den här fantastiska vintern. A few days after this was filmed, this picture turned into this. 
Joao Vanessa is in charge of the skiers' free ride competition during the festival, and he had some tense weeks of waiting before the snow came. Vi hadde jo tru også. Vi vet jo at Asne hadde møtt i mars og april før, så vi hadde tru på at det skulle gå an, og selv med det litt lange snø som var, så hadde vi nok gått an å gjennomføre på et eller annet vis. Men nå har det jo heldigvis kommet en del med snø, og vi kikker rundt på sider, og vi tror nok så sikkert at vi skal finne en side som går bra å konkurrere i, som er verdt å konkurrere i, og som gir god kjøring. The Valda area is famous for its mountains, and these days the organizers of the free ride during X2 are looking for a perfect location for the competition. Grundplanen det är att ha den i samma sida som i fjor, alltså uppe i trollkoppen vid bondalsida. Men vi må se nöje på hur det är med med snöförhåll och och i förhåll till skred som minst. Men det hade varit väldigt fint om de ekarna arrangerar i den sida som var i fjor. Det er folk som kommer inn på liste også hver dag, og det er mye flinke folk som er påmeldte, så jeg har tro på at det blir bra. The X2 festival will be held from 3rd to 6th of April. Last year, the Norwegian mental coach Aring Bertrand Larsen published a book called Helvetesuka. The idea is to live under extreme circumstances to give life a new perspective. Two students from Volda University College have gone through Hell Week and documented the experience in a web series. This is the fourth episode where the constituents face their biggest fear. Ja, en av de tingene man skal gjøre i dag på ut av komfortsonen er å konfrontere en frykt vi har. Og min største frykt er desidert hunder. Jeg er livredd for store hunder, så jeg er ikke i tur med den største hunden noensinne. Når du blir bjepper, da stikker det hele meg, for da føles det som de er så aggressive. Du vil jo ikke se på meg en gang. Kan du sitte? Sitt! Jeg vet ikke hva det er. Nei, den satt seg! Nemi heter den hunden. Jeg tror nok jeg hadde før, eller når jeg møter på den hunden nå, når jeg møter på Nemi nå, så kommer jeg nok til å vite at hun er ikke så farlig som det jeg tror. Så jeg har jo virkelig lært av frykten min at det er ikke så farlig som man tror. Men det som man vet jo aldri hvor man har hunder, så plutselig en dag så er Nemi... Nemi! Dette var ut av komfortsonen min, først og fremst fordi jeg ikke har noe spesielt kunnskap om barn og deres atferd. Så for meg å stå sammen med de ble plutselig et helt nytt 
en ny greie på meg. Jeg synes vi alle får en ring rundt meg nå. Jeg har lett en rekk som heter Hi-Ha-Ho, heter den. Hi. Jeg prøvde å sette i gang en lek, som svært få egentlig var så veldig med på. De ville liksom leke deres lek da. Det var greit, jeg forstår vidt. Jeg er veldig tilpassningsdyktig sånn sett, men... Så der merket jeg at jeg følte meg veldig ganske liten da, selv om jeg var stor. Musevise da. Musevise, ja. Det er julesangen da. Ja. Det blir kanskje feil å synge den nå som ikke er jul. Jo. Synes du ikke det? Jeg synger det alltid. Ja, selv om det ikke er jul. Vi kan jo bare synge den selv om det er jul. Dette er en liten bjørne nisse. Og nå tror jeg snart må ut og fise. Nei, det er ikke fise. Er det ikke det? Ja. Er det ikke sånn her da? Nei, det er jo ute av komfortsonen dagen i dag. Og mye av grunnen til det er at vi skal faktisk pushe oss selv. Vi skal døgne og være våkne i 41 timer til sammen. Og prøve å jobbe kontinuerlig hele tiden og få gjort mye mens vi er våkne. That's it from us here in Volda, Norway. Stigulv will play us out with silence.